The eyes are speaking. Those are daddy's eyes. It's been nearly 50 years since Penfield Tate II led a city in which he was an outlier. When we moved here, there were very few African-American families. There aren't that many now, but there were fewer then. Being black in a sea of whiteness might encourage some to blend into the background, but this father of four always knew his family's identity should be celebrated. They literally came in and taught us about who we were. Our culture. Our, our culture, history. our people, and, and instilled pride in who we were because the school system to this day still does not do that. Back in the late 60s, as one of Boulder's only black attorneys, Penfield became a voice of the black community. He and his wife taught black history to his kids and other children of color every Saturday. <laughs> Three of the four Tate siblings remember the rigorous coursework fondly. It was being a part of the community, but also understanding as black people, we have a community amongst yeah. each other, and they really fostered that. Before moving his family from Ohio to Colorado in 67, the All-American college football player went to law school at night while in the U.S. Army. Being a leader amongst his own community came naturally. Being a voice for justice was his calling. Was he used to tell you, if something's not right, you call it out. You may not be able to change it. But it's your job, as he used to tell me, to hold a mirror up to people's actions so they would not sit comfortably in their seat. You could say it was that unwillingness to sit idle that prompted Penfield to run for Boulder City Council in 1972, pushing the boundaries of what for decades was complacently homogeneous. Uh, Boulder wasn't a terribly progressive town at the time. It really wasn't. They were debating whether to put his picture on the campaign literature because the thought was is if people see you're black, they may not vote for you. And his point was, they're gonna see me sooner or later. So we may as well put my picture on the literature. Picture and all, Penfield was the top vote getter in the city council election that year. It's interesting, when you look at all the pictures of the city council, um, it's all white men until you get to 1972. And it's my dad and two other women. And two years later, the council would vote him mayor. Almost immediately, he found himself in a position to be the voice of another marginalized class of citizens. Some people from the community came to him and said, we're having this problem. He's like, oh, we can fix that. We'll just pass an ordinance and take care of it. He, he never thought it was going to be controversial. And when it was, he never wavered. He just said, no, this is wrong. We've got to address it. Mayor Tate and the council amended an existing human rights ordinance to prohibit discrimination against people due to sexual orientation. Which eventually ended his political career. He would survive the recall attempt launched by Boulder's conservative faction at the time, but he was never elected for public office again. He did what was right, whether it was politically expedient, socially conscionable or not. When he saw something that needed to be addressed, he was the type of man who addressed it without thought to what the blowback would be on him. It was a short political career, but Penfield's humanitarian work would continue until his death in 1993. He sued the Elk Lodge to admit members of color. He started the United Black Action Committee to gather and advocate for black boulderites. I mean, for me, it's all about representation. You know, in Boulder, it's not sort of diverse as it can be. Um, so to know that someone like Penfield Tate was someone in the minority, but also was a great role model. When famed street artist Thomas Detour Evans was tasked with painting a mural on the public library, the choice was easy. For me, you know, having individuals like that look like me and, you know, come from, you know, small communities, come up to, you know, be people who are leaders in the community is something that I think we need to sort of um, distribute more of that education, that knowledge, that sort of history as much as possible. It makes me even more proud that pe other people, new generations of Boulderites get to learn about who he was. And even in 2020, Pinfield Tate II is yet again adding visible color to a city that lacks it. It, it signals that there, there is a human connection between all of us that even in a place like Boulder, there is diversity in this community. You have to look closely to find it, but there's diversity now and there's a history of diversity in Boulder. In Boulder, Alexandra Lewis, Nine News.